With there being added to the standard banner in Genshin Impact Patch 3.6, it begs the question, is this the greatest thing ever or should you even care? So should you be using your fates on the day event banner when it's released? Try to get her on the standard banner or should you be pulling on the current characters? Now with there being added to the standard banner, you might be thinking that it's the greatest thing ever. I'm not so sure about that. If you've ever seen anyone try to pull for a specific character from this standard banner, just find any YouTube video of Genshin launch where a player is trying to pull for a specific five star from the standard banner and you will find the epitome of disappointment. Thousands of dollars spent and no character in sight. Why is that? Well, that's because the standard banner, unlike the character event banners, has no 50-50 system for getting a character of your choice. It's always going to be split up between every character that's a five star on this banner, which means that in addition to Tignari, Kaching, Chi Chi, Jean, Deluke, and Mona, Dea will be added to this banner. And if you get a five star character, not even talk about the weapons that also come from this, it's going to be a one in in seven with no way to actually pity a specific character such as Dea on this banner the odds of you getting her from specifically the standard banner are awful but it gets worse than that because well we're not going to be buying a quaint fates with our primo gems primo gems always are going to be spent on gaining access to more intertwined fates. But the ability for you to be pulling on the standard banner is so much lower because you're gonna be spending all your primos on the intertwined fate system. We don't get very many of these acquaint fates as rewards. Sure, they add some now and then from event quests or story mode or leveling characters to certain thresholds in Genshin Impact. Outside of that though, all of your primo gems are gonna be turned into the intertwined fates to be used on event wishes. So not only are your odds of getting the character that you want from this banner abysmally low, the amount of chances that you get for that to even happen are terribly low as well. And while that is possible, the odds are definitely not in your favor. I wish you all of the luck, but that is something that you cannot depend on. So if you're a day of fan, your best option still is going to be pulling on her event banner. And this video isn't talking about the power of Dea. This is specifically if you want access to her on your account, you cannot depend on this standard banner acquisition. So that's going to lead us with our second option, the characters currently on the banner. We have access to Hutel as well as Yelan. Yelan is one of my favorite characters in Genshin Impact. She is a trifecta monster. She has power, adaptability, as well as quality of life in Genshin Impact. Everyone already knows that she is a monstrous character, especially in reaction teams. She has the ability to apply Hydro like crazy, even at C0 with the combination of Depth, Clarion, Dice and your active character. On top of that, she has Adept with Ease, which also is gonna be useful for just boosting your damage up to 50%. A lot of the times this is going to average out to like a 30, maybe 40% damage increase in most team compositions, which alone is already insane. Combine that with the ability to build her quite easily with a large amount of weapons, including the best weapon for a very easy free to play access build in Favonius Warbo, you have a monster of a power character ready to rock and roll on most teams in Genshin Impact. And that's hitting at the second point, her flexibility. Do you want to do vaporize, freeze? You want to have an electro charge team? Do you want to have access to bloom or hyper bloom? Galen's going to be in all of these teams because she's the hydro character. If you want to use her, she'll find a spot in one of those teams so you can have fun with the characters that you want to have fun, boosting them up with Yelan as an insane support character. Now, the last great thing about Yelan is her quality of life in the open world. Genshin's becoming a very big place and having access to this skill right here for faster travel is insane. But if you don't have access to Yelan, you might not know the intricacies of how this is a game changer in my opinion. That's because when you use her skill, you actually do regenerate stamina, which allows you to sprint and then use her skill, it regenerates stamina and sprint once again, leading to you to traverse the open world in blazing record speed. So since I've had Yelan on my account, I haven't been able to put her down off my open world team strictly for that skill. And the one final thing for Yelan is gonna be her Constellation 1. Her C2 is very good as well, but Constellation 1 is something that you might want to think about. Now, why is this so good? Getting access to another chance to use the skill. Well, you've guessed it. You can run basically forever because not only does your stamina recharge, which is fantastic. No, but the other skill cooldown also is going to be reduced during the use of one of the other ones. As you can see, I'm regenerating both stamina in my second skill use at the same time, allowing me to come out with full stamina, sprint again. And then when I get low on stamina, I'm going to have multiple uses of my skill skill once again. This basically allows you to sprint forever. And I don't know if this is going to be banned in Windtrace or not, but if it's not, well, I'm going to be running and running 
and running. <laughs> I mean, I'm still going. I ran right through that tornado. Nothing can stop me. It's fine. And I'm going back to full stamina. Now, Hoop Town, on the other hand, is a DPS. She's not a support damage dealing character that is as flexible as Yelan, so she doesn't have those points. However, if you're a fantastic Hu Tao lover, I would recommend that you might look at the Constellation 1, especially if you're not interested in Dea or interested in anything that may be coming out as a rerun in 3.5. And this Constellation 1 does change up her gameplay quite a bit, which normally consists of a lot of jumping attacks as your animation cancel of choice with a couple of charge attack dashes to cancel every now and then. Constellation 1 is going to swap that up and allow you to do charge attack dash cancels a lot more often, which is a big deal because when you're doing the jumping charge attack cancel, this doesn't give you any invincibility frames. And with a character that likes to play at super low health, that might be a bad thing. Constellation 1 fixed that and allows you to use a lot more of the dash cancels, which is going to do two things. Number one, you can fit slightly more attacks into your combos. So you're going to do around 15 to 20 percent increased damage. But on top of that, it's also going to be increased survivability because you're able to do more of the dash cancels, which actually have animation canceling invincibility frames instead of the jump cancel, which has no invincibility frames whatsoever. And this third one comes down to play style, but I love the dash cancel a lot more than just the jumping cancel. This thing right here is kind of brainless to me, but that's something that you're going to have to decide for yourself if you want to have access to Constellation 1. As a Hu Tao enjoyer, I do love it. It's really the only Constellation I would even think about on this character. Another thing to think about is the weapon banner. If you enjoy bow or spear characters, well, these weapons are some of the best you can gain access to on your account. So if you want to mess with a weapon banner, these are insane. We don't really know what the second one on the Dea banner is going to be yet. Also, Dea's weapons sort of handmade and tailored specifically for her. So if you're looking for a new weapon, this one is going to be pretty good as long as you use these two types. And as a small bonus, if you're fairly new to Genshin Impact, Yelan as well as Xing Cho, who is a four star on either of the current Hu Tao or Yelan banners, are fantastic hydro characters that can get a lot of teams made with them in mind, including a Hu Tao team, which is something that you could very easily put together with a little bit of luck. And as Day is an unreleased character, we don't have solid information on exactly everyone being able to play test her. So she's an unknown factor, whereas we know that Hu Tao as well as Yilan are pretty dang good. And then Ayaka as well as Shenhe can be re-released in 3.5, which if you're a Cryo aficionado, you could pick up as well. And while Cryo hasn't gotten the most amount of love in addition to when Dendra was released, Ayaka as well as Shenhe still have have multiple uses in different cryo based teams, even stuff like weird melt Ganyu teams, which may or may not get a little bit of love from Dea in 3.5. There's also Sino being reran in 3.5 as well. While not an absolutely insane character, he's not awful either. So if you enjoy his play style, he's also going to be available for your fine earned primo gem. And while we don't know all of the four stars on the banner currently, we do know that Mika is going to be on these banners as well. So if you're a physical carry aficionado, you love Yulo, you're a razor main, Mika is going to be pretty new in pretty substantial for these teams. Attack speed bonus can heal, also has physical damage bonus up, and if you're absolutely insane, Constellation 6 is going to give you physical crit damage of 60%, which is wild. But no matter what your decision is, there is no incorrect decision on what you should pick. As long as it's an informed decision, do you like Ayaka? Go for that one. Do you hate Dea? Fine, pass her. Are you a giant Dea fan? Great, pull for her. Just don't expect to be getting her from the standard banner.